Tingles with ASMR and gas lamp. ASMR is gonna give you a brief outline of the other three artists introduced in this video. This has been a long time coming and I think all of them deserve recognition and at least for you to maybe check out their channel. So, gas lamp. His most interesting videos to me, of course, are his map videos. Um, that's actually why ASMR to go reached out to all of us, because we all have, in one way or another, um, touched upon map videos, that genre. So he's done maps, um, he has an awesome vinyl collection, and, uh, he has a separate video with his turntable, Scrabble, and, um, one that particularly is nostalgic for me is those little green plastic, clearly molded toy soldiers that he messes with. So, yeah, go check them out if you're into nostalgia and tinkering and just a really relaxing, f pleasant personality. Next. is Flyby. She is uh, living in Australia, in, in Australia, in Australia. And uh, she, she does a couple of videos, um, naturally, some videos about Australia, although she is American. So her perception brings an interesting outside perspective to it. And her um, about page says, come along and enjoy some relaxation. Map Mondays. Every Monday she busts out a map, and it's awesome. Whisper Wednesdays is, of course, when she whispers, whispers, whispers. And um, her take on, like, a, a discussion video a lot is similar to what I, what I do. Um, generally more personal. And I find a lot of comfort and I get a lot of that disarming nature by her opening herself up in a lot of her videos. They're very much, well, they're very personal. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. Um, but they're very introspective, I guess. And they make you feel like you're right there with her and just having a conversation and a, um, talking to just a pleasant person, so, um, and then lastly, Food Fridays, so a lot of her uploads include, uh, as she self-describes, travel agents, tour guides, educational, and top tens, um, some of my favorite of her videos are, um, her flight attendant role play, which is really, really well done, and, uh, couple Harry Potter role plays, one of which she's actually in Hall of Vendors, um, wand shop, and it's pretty cool. And then lastly, we have ASMR to come. His statement is, if you enjoy to relax while watching maps, live drawing, geography, listening to history, slow speaking, and I'm going to put the Australian one down pick up because he draws a lot listening to history slow soft speaking 
his uh, deep voice. He says, I guess this is the place for you, then, if you were interested in all that. In my videos, I try to create a calm atmosphere for sleep aid and ASMR relaxation. Or perhaps the perfect environment for meditation or studying. Only you, only you know if it works. And that last sentence is a great um, indication of his open personality and his most interesting videos for me are his pajama rambles where he uh, takes his portable microphone in bed and is in his pajamas and just talks really really close and soft and in a deep voice and um, he touches upon some psychological aspects of social anxiety and um, just a uh, very intimate setting. It feels very nice. And, uh, and of course, map drawing. He actually draws. Draws maps in very well, might I add. So with this extremely long intro, um, hopefully I cut it down. I'm at like 25 minutes right now, which is way too long for an intro. But I'm just excited to introduce these other artists, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. They're in my description of all my videos. Um, but I'm just very happy that you all get to um, be introduced to them. And I'm proud, I'm very proud of this collaboration effort between all of us. It's it's fun, um, it was a little bit of work, but with all great things, if it's easy, it wouldn't be as fun, it wouldn't be as meaningful in the end. So uh, please enjoy us challenging and finding all of these interesting places all around. Let's find our first location for flyby. Of course, we have to find the index first. somehow managed to pick three bodies of water. This one is a strait, the Endeavor, and Queensland. So... I'm gonna go down two places, because flyby has been living in Australia, and I'm sure she's very familiar with that place. So let's take her to New Mexico, in ND, New Mexico. Go ahead and write that down. ND 
Lindy in New Mexico. Let's check out the index first. If it's in my index, and and well, and a cut, and a lint, and a bear, and a bee, and a bee. That's actually and a bury, and a lay. Endeavor. We have an ending Indonesia, but it's all with a single E. Don't have anything with a uh, double E. So, don't think we're going to find that. We can just really quickly. Uh, Maybe we'll just have a little look through New Mexico so that we can actually see uh, what order they look. I think North and South America are the last ones on here after Australia. Canada. We have New Mexico there. Let me see if I have any closer. Pennsylvania. A little bit of New Mexico there. And a little bit of New Mexico there. Don't actually have a lot there. We have Gallup. I've been through Gallup. Been through that little area driving through my way to Texas, but Queen, oh, that's a peak. Tierra Maria, Chama, Dork, Aztec, Bloomfield, Gardenland, Farmington, Grow Point, Zuni, Green Meadow. They could probably fit a lot more cities in. So I assume we don't have ND coming up just because it's pretty, pretty light on for cities in New Mexico, we can see on the previous page as well down here. And it's just uh, Des Moines, Raton, Roy, um, Camp Roy, Mosquero, Tucumcari, I think I've been to Tucumcari as well, Clovis, Portales, Tatum, Lovington, Hobbs, Eunice, Chow, but you can see very sparsely actually listed for the city, so I think that's probably why we don't have it coming up in my atlas, so thank you for the challenge. I think I've been bested this time. So I went on Google to do a little bit more research on ND North, North Mexico, <laughs> New Mexico. To see if I could find out where it is and maybe why I was having a hard time finding it. So I've got some notes on the back here. So first I'll just direct you to where it's located. So it's 35.08 north, so let's so that should be probably right in between these two. So right around this line. And then it's going to be 103.06 east, which is going to be roughly right here. 
so should be right around here is where that would be based on the GPS coordinates I could get on it. Now to discuss perhaps why I don't find it in my atlas in particular. It is a unincorporated community on the route of the historic Route 66. In 1952, the Route 66 was rerouted, so it bypassed ND. In 1950, there was a population of 187, but in the present day, it's actually been abandoned, and so it's considered a ghost town. So, um, yeah, probably why it's not showing up in my atlas, <laughs> having very low population numbers. But that's alright, I learned something interesting. So, I've got a little couple Google Maps images to show to you. This first one is just an image showing you when you Google search for ND in Google Maps, what comes up? So you can see even the unincorporated community, uh, the name is not listed in Google Maps. It's just, I think it's right on the intersection of those two roads, but it's not even listed. So the next one I want to show you is the journey, I guess, between San John and ND, which is the closest town to ND currently. So that's quite zoomed in, and then we'll zoom it out to show it in with New Mexico all in there. So you can see they're really close to each other. So coming back to this map, we can see San John right here. Right at this location, little dots right there, so we know ND is just just a little bit over this way. So that was a bit of fun to learn about uh, Ghost Town. It is listed in a few places on uh, roads that you can go down if you want to see some ghost towns. So probably an interesting little place is ND, New Mexico. So thank you for the challenge, and I learned something very interesting there. Gas lamp ASMR. I challenge you to find from my Phillips Great World Atlas. Hello there. Tingles with Flyby has challenged us to find a place, a place in the world using our atlas today. That place It's a river in the United States of America, and it's called the Canadian River. 
And that's a little amusing because Canada is the country to the USA's immediate north. But we're looking for a river named the Canadian River down in the USA. So that's pretty cool. So first, let's head to our index. Headed to the C's in our index. Looking for the Canadian. Let's see. Canadian River. There's a Canadian section of the index right here. Looks like we have a match. We have Canadian, RIV for river, and US for the United States. And the index is telling us that we want to be on page 72. And in the grid, we want to be at C7, page 72, C7. So let's take a look. All right, page 72, So this is a little interesting to me that it points us to the pages with the entire United States rather than a specific state. So I assume that means that the Canadian River is so long that it travels through several states. and. They felt this was the best way to reference it. So they want us looking at grid C7. So 7 is right here. So this zone is 7. And this zone is C. So let's uh, take a closer look here and see if we can find the Canadian River. So the grid that we're looking for has brought us to the area of the country with Oklahoma and Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, North Texas. We're looking at C7. Let's see, 7 is in between this line and this line. And C is between this line and the line at the very top of the frame. So this is the grid that we want. 
and we do see the word Canadian a couple of times. We see Canadian R for river here. We also see a North Canadian River up here. What's interesting to me is that as these rivers progress to the west, seem to get smaller and smaller, but they picked this grid for us to locate them because it seems to me that the word Canadian is in this grid, but it seems to me that the bulk of these rivers is actually in Oklahoma, the next grid square to the east. We follow the Canadian River. Looks like it goes this way. Ah. Seems to me that the Arkansas River here in Arkansas splits right here in very eastern Oklahoma and becomes the Canadian River and the North Canadian River. Just based on my high level Look here, it seems to be what's happening. Why don't we, um, out of curiosity, why don't we poke on this a little bit more and find the page with Oklahoma on it and see what a closer view can tell us about uh, what's going on with the Canadian River and its sibling to the north, shall we? Now, I think these state pages are arranged generally alphabetically, except perhaps in those cases where they bundle up two states per page. So, let's see if we can find uh, Oklahoma. Let's take a closer look here and see what this map tells us. So, here is a close-up view of the section of Oklahoma that we've been talking about. Now, I was just kind of quickly eyeballing the previous map, and I thought it was telling me that the Arkansas River splits into the Canadian and North Canadian rivers. But looking at the map with more detail. I think we can see that I was wrong about that. I was misreading the the map with the uh, the coarser level of detail. Here we can see the Arkansas coming in to Oklahoma, the eastern edge of the state. And what we can see here is that the Arkansas River continues this way and that the Canadian River breaks off here. 
This is the Canadian River proper. It extends this way, and then the North Canadian River splits off here. Looks like the North Canadian ends up going through Oklahoma City, whereas the Canadian River goes south of that, and they both exit the state to the northwest. Following the shape of the land, we also see, interestingly, that a, a third large river breaks off from the Arkansas here, called the Cimarron River. And it follows a similar northwesterly track out of the state, roughly parallel to the North Canadian and the Canadian. It's hard to tell much topographic detail from a map like this, but looks like there's something characteristic about this part of the state that is causing all the major rivers to flow in a similar manner out of the state. So there we have it. I think we have successfully found and analyzed the Canadian River, thanks to Tingles with Flyby for the challenge today. Hello, this is Gas Lamp ASMR with a geographic challenge for Let's Find Out ASMR. First, we're going to travel to our random index page, which is 428 this time. Four twenty eight is here. And we're gonna we're gonna find a place called Stanley and there's actually a few Stanleys here. I'm gonna go with the first one, which is it's listed as falls, which I assume are waterfalls. And that's in the Belgian Congo. That is a uh, that is a place that this 1955 atlas calls out that doesn't really exist as such, as this geopolitical entity anymore, so hopefully that will make for an interesting uh, finding video for Let's Find Out ASMR. So good luck finding Stanley, the falls in the Belgian Congo. Okay, gas lamp. So you just challenged me to find what was in your atlas called the Belgian Congo. I say that because I think there may be a chance that it will be a different country name as our atlases are made in different time periods in the continent of Africa is always very unstable in the place.
political sphere. So let's find out. Zaire goes all the way over here. <laughs> I'm sure they fought for that tiny little bit of coastline right there. And it's actually very big. I wonder if it's still that same name today. It's a waterfall. I assume it's going to be near some rivers or water. Some form of water. Okay.
Stanley Falls, Stanley Falls, Stanley Falls, Stanley Falls, Stanley Falls, where are you? Huh. Stanley Falls. Oh, I think I found it. Nice. Here it is. also known as Boyoma. Wow. That is in the densest part of Africa. That is the heart of Africa, if I've ever seen it. Wow. Pretty much Exactly right in the middle of Africa. Very cool. Alright, that was a good one, Gas Lamp. Thanks. Looking forward to your next one. for Antarctica. So I know you have you're very familiar with many territories specifically in Europe. So hopefully we don't pick anything that too easy for you. Let's take you to Alaska and to a place called
red lion here. Red level. It's on page 194. 1st and 32nd parallel, I guess. And then we had red level 86.36 west. 